Hello everyone, welcome to lab number 12. Today we are going to learn about how to simulate a race condition with a program. There are two things that are required before you start on with this lab. First one is you need to know the basic theory of what is race condition because I am not going to discuss that in this lab. The link to the video tutorial where I have discussed the race condition in detail is mentioned in the description part. The second thing that is required is you need to know how to create threads because we are going to implement this concept of race condition with the help of creating threads. So you need to know how to create threads. I have already uploaded a program on how to create threads so you can refer that. So make sure that you know both these things before starting on with this particular tutorial. Now we are going to create two threads, thread1 and thread2 in the program. Both the threads are going to call two different functions. Thread1 is going to call a function fun1 whereas thread2 is going to call a function fun2. Both these functions are going to work upon a variable whose name is shared and whose initial value is 1. The function fun1 is going to increment the value of the shared variable whereas the function fun2 is going to decrement the value of shared variable. So now if one of the function is going to increment the value, another is going to decrement the value. So this means that the ultimate or the resultant value of the shared variable should be 1 because one of them is going to increment, another is going to decrement. But we are going to create or simulate the race condition which means that the value of the shared variable will not be 1 but it will be either 0 or 2 depending upon which thread runs first. That's the concept of race condition also which means that the ultimate value is not going to be what you expect because the threads are going to run in such a way that they are going to overlap the working of each other which result in the race condition. Now this is the program. So I have created two threads, thread1 and thread2. Okay, Thread1 is going to call the function fun1 thread2 is going to call the function fun2. There is a shared variable whose initial value is 1. Okay, So make sure that the shared variable is outside the main function so that it is accessible to both the functions fun1 as well as fun2. So we are going to create both the threads, call them and then finally after both the threads have executed we are going to print the final value of the shared variable. Okay, Since we are going to simulate the race condition the value will not be 1, it will be either 0 or 2. Now what is going to happen in function fun1 is there is a local variable x which in which we are going to copy the value of the shared variable. So since function1 is called by thread1, so thread1 is called first. So initial value of the shared variable is 1. So value of x becomes 1. Then this particular thread is going to print that value. So you will see that thread1 reads the value of shared variable. This will be 1. Then x++ plus plus, we are going to increment the value of x which is the local value. So after the local update the value of x will become 2. So that will come on your screen. Now remember we are going to simulate the race condition hence we need to overlap the working of both the threads. So I am going to use the sleep function which will sleep this particular thread and then this will give the thread 2 a chance to run. Now remember that we have locally updated the value of x but I have not updated the value of the shared variable. The shared variable's value is still 1 but locally it has been incremented to 2. Now it, this particular thread goes to sleep. This means that thread 2 will run. So thread 2 is calling function fun2. So in function fun2 we have a local variable y which copies the value of the shared variable which is still unstable because it has been locally updated but not reflected in the global value. So this value of shared variable is still 1. So y's value becomes 1 then we decrement the value of y. So y becomes 0 and then we again sleep. So we have again locally decremented the value Sleep means this particular thread will go to sleep and the control will get back to the first thread. Okay, And then 
the first set is going to update the value of the shared variable which is what local value of x was 2 so shared variables value becomes 2 and then this value gets printed on the screen so the thread 1 has finished by incrementing the value of shared variable to 2 once the thread 1 gets finished the control comes back to thread 2 which again updates the value of the shared variable to whatever is the value of y and remember the value of y was 0 so the final value of shared variable becomes 0 this is what is the case in race condition okay the expected value was 1 but since the operations of both the thread were overlapped hence the resultant value becomes 0 if the threads ran in the opposite order that is if the decrement happened first and then the increment then the final value would have been 2 okay so let's run this process once so let us compile this program run it and now you can see thread 1 reads the value of shared variable as 1 so thread 1 is the first one to run local updation by thread 1 so 2 so remember after this the thread 1 went to sleep so thread 2 starts it reads the value of the shared variable again it is 1 because it has not been updated yet local updation by thread 2 so it becomes 0 now again the control comes back to thread 1 and it updates the value of the shared variable so value of shared variable by thread 1 is 2 once thread 1 finishes the thread 2 also updates the local value to the global value of the shared variable and it becomes 0 finally the value of the shared variable is 0 so now what you should do is as a practice you just change the order of these two threads okay so make sure that thread 2 runs first and then the thread 1 you will see that the final value of the shared variable becomes 2 and still not 1 okay so this is how you can simulate the race condition always remember that you need to make use of the sleep function if you miss this sleep function the threads working is not going to overlap if you don't use sleep this thread is going to finish in one single flow hence thread 1 is going to update the value to 2 then the thread 2 is going to copy the updated value which will be 2 and it will decrement it back to 1 and the final value will remain 1 only so it's important that you use the sleep function the use of sleep in both the functions here ensures that it doesn't matter in which order you run the threads the race condition is still going to be implemented all right so that's all about how to simulate the race condition in the next lab we are going to see how to prevent race condition from occurring and we are going to use that with two methods one is with the use of mutex logs and another is with the use of semaphores so don't forget to subscribe so that you do not miss on any of our future videos till then keep watching next tutor see you in the next class